Together We're Strong by Liesel Jobson, Alice Teuch and Nasli Jacobs. One harsh winter, many people in the land were sick. Mom Monica's cheeks burned, sweat dripped from her body. She wanted to hold the icy grass to her face to cool down. Under her blanket, she held her belly and sang to the baby inside her. Be strong, little one, winter's not long. Be brave, little one, together we're strong. Her stomach growled when the baby's powerful kicks woke her at night. She ate the leftover meat in the cooking pot, hungry for life. One bright night, the moon was bigger, fatter, and pinker than ever. Her breath came fast. The baby was ready. The aunties in the birthing room rubbed her back and warmed the water. When Monica held her beautiful daughter in her arms, she knew she was a special girl, a fighter. What a blessing! Her name is Nonsigelelo. She will be the mother of all blessings. Nonsigelelo was beautiful and strong with crinkling black button eyes. She loved her older brother, Mwengi. He made her laugh and so the laughter spread. She loved to eat meat before she had teeth. Her favorite aunt, always kept a little portion on the side of a plate for Ntsiki. Ngi chased the chickens that scratched in the garden where Mom Monica grew spinach and squash to feed her family. Ziki ran after him as her legs grew strong. Mom Monica had another baby boy, Velapi, and another, Kudalele, and finally, another sister, Nomiale. Little Tziki folded napkins and washed the baby clothes. She swept the house and fed the fire. She picked up her baby brother when he cried and tickled him till he laughed. She taught them to sing, Be strong, little one. Winter is gone. Be brave, little one. Together we strong. Kingliwe, her grandfather raised horses. His favorite was Shishi, a glossy black man. As soon as Nziki was old enough, he hoisted her onto the saddle in front of him. His strong arms reached around her. He laced the reins through her fingers. He taught her to talk softly to Shishi, to groom her with a hard bristled brush. When she stroked Shishi's glossy coat, Tsiki whispered, You are the most beautiful creature. Thank you for letting me ride on your back. Her father, Bonilizwe, came home from the mines at Christmas. Tsiki pulled herself up onto Shishi's broad back. She rode out to meet him at the bus stop. She sat tall and straight, her knees held firm. She handled the reins with gentle fingers. How proud Bonilusa was of his daughter. The biggest smile Ziggy had ever seen covered her father's face. On her sixth birthday, she went to school. You must choose an English name, said the Presbyterian teacher. But Ziggy liked her own name. Why do I need a new name? she asked. The teacher scowled and read the names aloud. Ida, Agnes, Albertina, Anna. What did they mean? Ziggy liked the long name best. Albertina. The name had rhythm. Albertina. The name had bounce. Albertina was a name you didn't mess with. Her mother was often sick and needed Albertina to look after the home. 
In her last year of primary school, Albertina was the oldest pupil in the school. She was chosen to be the head girl and wore her badge with pride. Her best friend Betty told her about a competition saying, "You must apply, my clever friend. What is the prize?" asked Albertina, growing curious. "A scholarship to high school," said Betty. "You must apply. You'll win it for sure." Albertina studied until the candle burned down. She practiced sums, she practiced spelling, she sharpened her pencils and gave her shoes an extra shine. Next morning, she passed Shishi in her paddock. The horse whinnied and stamped the ground. At last, the test began. Albertina's fingers shook. The sums were tricky. Her mouth went dry. Her hand cramped on her pencil, but she continued. Well done, Albertina said. Her teacher at the end. The important official arrived and called the top two students to the stage. Well done to Albertina for full marks, he said. But you are too old. The scholarship goes to. And Albertina tried not to cry. That's unfair! Shouted Betty, hopping with fury. That wasn't in the rules. How would Abetina go to high school now? She dragged her feet all the way home. The teacher wrote to the newspaper about the unfair decision. Brother Joe at the Catholic mission station read the story. He pushed the newspaper across the table to Father Bernard. He didn't like the story one bit either. Soon enough, there was a scholarship for Albertina. Maria Zell near Matadiele was a long way from Kolobe, but the whole village erupted. Their home girl was off to high school. She would make them proud. They threw a party like no other. The women brewed the sorghum beer and lit the fires. They slaughtered chickens and stirred up pots of meat. Albertina smiled till her face ached. She packed her brown suitcase and polished her shoes again. Before setting off on the bus to Matadiele, she said goodbye to Shishi. Albertina brushed her coat and stroked her wiry mane. She whispered. All her questions into the horse's silky ear. What if I get lost? Will I make new friends? Will I still be clever so far from home? She she winded and stamped the ground. School days started well before sunrise. The girls washed quickly in the cold water and swept the dormitories before mess. The milky porridge was never quite enough. The stew not as tasty as Auntie's back home, but Albertina studied hard. She played netball on sunny afternoons. In her school holidays, Albertina worked at the mission station. She rubbed and scrubbed against the zinc washboard. She boiled sheets in copper tubs, then wound them through the wringer. She hoed and tilled the school garden. But she missed her family. Who was telling her brothers and sisters funny stories? Who wiped their eyes when they cried? Who tickled them until they laughed? Albertina loved the nuns who taught her. Could she become a holy sister? But nuns earn no salary," said Father Bernard. "Perhaps you should become a nurse. You'll be paid while you study." Albertina took a train to Johannesburg. She bought a smart white uniform, new navy shoes, and a shiny red fountain pen. Sick people came all day to the hospital. She cleaned their wounds with careful fingers. She held the old people gently. When the babies cried, she sang, "Be strong, little ones. Winter's not long." Be brave, little ones. Together we strong. Some nights, Albertina worked 
till dawn. She looked out the window and thought of her family. Were the children hungry? Did they go to school? Who was riding Shishi? She remembered the dark green spinach. She missed the scent of the earth. There was no vegetable garden here. There was nowhere for a horse. Albertina never went to parties. She saved every shilling. On her days off, she learned to play tennis. Whoosh! Plop! She whipped the ball across the net. Always she wished for a little more money to send home. Walter Sisulu was a brave and clever man who dreamed of freedom for South Africa. His big smile captured Albertina's eye. They walked together down the city streets. Her delicate hand rested on his arm. Walter wanted Albertina to be the mother of his children. Bright ribbons decorated the Bandu Men's Social Center on their wedding day. Albertina's long sleeve dress had a swelling train of lace. Many friends blessed their special day. Albertina planted flowers in her little garden. Within a year, Max was born. Albertina had become a mother. One day, people would call her the mother of the nation. Max had his mother's black button eyes and his father's round chin. He was the hope for the future. Albertina wanted to fight for a new South Africa so that Max could be free. When he cried, she sang, Be strong, little one. Winter's not long. Be brave, little one. Together we strong. Police came in the middle of the night, banging on the door. Albertina scolded the man who messed up her house. How rude you are, she said, trembling mud inside my home. In the morning, Albertina's favorite flowers lay crushed beneath their footprints. She remembered chasing the chickens from her vegetable garden back in Kolobe and set about replanting the garden. The earth she knew would recover. She would support her husband, who kept many secrets and hid from the police. She joined the women and worked to organize a march to Pretoria. The women refused to carry a pass. They sang, Watinda Bafazi, Watindi Mbogodo. You strike a woman, you strike a rock. Many hard years followed Walter's arrest. He was jailed on Robben Island for 26 years. Albertina also was sent to jail many times. Often she was scared. Often she was lonely. But even on the darkest nights, she could see a sliver of the moon through the window in her cell. She sang the song that Ma Monica sang before she was born. Be strong, little one. Winter's not long. Be brave, little one. Together we are strong. Read by Sindiwe Magona. This program is produced by Cassie Lowers, Vian Venter, and Diane Simpson.